Welcome to What's New in Android, your guided tour through everything happening in Android development across the platform, Jetpack, tools, and more. This is a whirlwind tour, or more of a too long, didn't watch, of all of the Android talks at I.O. And there's a lot to cover. So let's get started. First up, my favorite topic, dogs. OK, my second favorite, Jetpack. Our Jetpack libraries help you implement our opinionated guidance and handle backwards compatibility. With over 120 libraries, Jetpack has a lot in store for you, from updates to existing libraries to brand new libraries. The new Jenkstats library helps you track and analyze performance problems in your apps. To make your app load faster and reduce drop frames the first time a user interacts with your app, we created baseline profiles. Existing libraries got a lot of updates as well. Room 2.5 brings the initial stages of a full Kotlin rewrite, stable support for KSP, and relational query methods. With the latest navigation library, you can support multiple backstacks without any code changes and easily implement a two-pane layout. I won't go over all of the Jetpack highlights. For that, plus all of the architecture and testing guidance updates, check out the What's New in Jetpack talk. One of the first ever support libraries was Fragments. Love them or hate them, Fragments today have changed significantly. Responsibilities that first belonged to Fragments are now handled by separate, purpose-built classes, and APIs have been deprecated for separate, testable classes. For example, APIs that look like lifecycle methods have been deprecated in favor of Android X lifecycle. To pass information from one fragment to another, use the fragment result API, which under the hood uses lifecycle APIs. This in turn leads to code that's easier to test using fragment scenario and test lifecycle owner. But don't just take my word for it. Check out fragments, the good non-deprecated parts, to find out more about the latest changes and ensure that you're following the fragment best practices. One of the latest Jetpack libraries is Compose, our modern declarative UI toolkit. Compose 1.2 Beta was just released, continuing to bring the APIs you need to support more advanced use cases, like downloadable fonts, nested scrolling intro, and more tooling support with features like live edit, recomposition, debugging, and animation preview. Compose features in a number of talks, but two of them are deep dives into how Compose works, performance and lazy layouts. While Compose aims to deliver great performance out of the box, this talk will show you how to squeeze the most out of it and some patterns to avoid. From setting up your build correctly or using baseline profile to improve app performance to always profiling a release build, this talk will set you up for success. It also provides a number of tips, such as being conscious of where you read state, what the backwards write is and why you should avoid it, and remembering to remember. Check out the full talk for all the gotchas and why they're important so you can write speedy Compose apps. If you want to learn the ins and outs of working with lazy lists, I've got just the talk for you, lazy layouts in Compose. From basic use cases like customizing your list appearance or how to control scroll position, to practical tips to ensure you're getting the most out of lazy lists. But my favorite section is on lazy grids. Lazy grids have recently been reworked with new capabilities, and the API graduated from experimental in Compose 1.2. Grids allow you to work with a fixed number of columns or work with adaptive sizing, making your UI look just right across different screen sizes. And you can even go completely custom, where you define how to compute the number and size of columns, including having non-standard dimensions for certain items. I always prefer to learn hands-on. And if you're the same, we've got two great workshops for you this I.O. Basic Layouts in Compose and State in Compose. Check them out. Whether you're working on an existing app or creating a new one from scratch, there are an increasing number of devices your app can run on, with screen sizes ranging from the smallest phones to foldables to the largest tablets and laptops. At this year's I.O., we're going large, with four talks and a workshop to take you from design to implementation for large screens. The first step is design. Designing for large screens starts with thinking about how the user holds and uses the device. Think about comfort, capability, efficiency, and immersion. So expand and reorganize your UI purposefully. Consider combining content and how you navigate through it. To help you organize the content and actions in your app, we're providing starting points for common use cases. These are a series of large screen layouts that we call canonical layouts. And we have three of them. List detail layout, which uses two columns for a list or a group of items, and the other one for a detailed view. 
supporting panel, where the screen is divided between a focus panel and a supporting panel, and the feet, which uses tiles to allow discovery. You also need to find the right threshold at which to change your UI. So we've defined new breakpoint values that help you classify devices into predefined size classes, compact, medium, and expanded. For more design considerations, check out Designing Apps for Large Screens. Now that you know how to design for larger screens, how do you build for them? Jetpack Window Manager 1.1 will provide window size classes, APIs to provide these predefined window sizes, which you can use to adapt your UI based on the available space. To build adaptive UIs without doing an entire rewrite, we'll showcase a number of APIs and when to use them. If you're using multiple activities, use Activity Embedding to easily place activities side by side. To combine fragments, check out Sliding Pane Layout. To adapt your navigation UI, see how the NavRail can help. And for drag and drop, use the new Jetpack Drop Helper utility class. To test your app, use the Resizable Emulator and the new Android Desktop Emulator. Check out Update Your App for the Larger Screen for more information. If you want to build adaptive UIs in Compose, we've got you covered. Implementing Android apps for all screen sizes walks you through how now in Android, one of our samples was built. Each screen was implementing following sets of design based on window size classes. Like this, the app looks great no matter what Android device you're using. You'll learn how to manage the navigation structure, why you should use only one navigation graph, and how to pick the right component depending on the window size class. Navigation bar for compact, navigation rail for medium, and navigation drawer for expanded. To learn more about this, but also state management and testing, head on over to the talk. When building for large screens, consider how your users will interact with your app. They may use a keyboard, a mouse, a trackpad, or perhaps a stylus. We have updated design guidance, helping you to understand input considerations when designing for a variety of devices. When it comes to implementation, both Views and Compose 1.2 support clicks and scrolls with peripherals out of the box. But there are several use cases you need to pay a little attention to. Does your layout look good with a virtual and a physical keyboard? Do your users expect some text to be selectable? Is it? Once you have the basics covered, consider improving the usability of your app even more. Implement keyboard shortcuts specific to your app, or allow users to navigate using the arrow keys or tab. Ensure that each interactive element is focusable and navigated to in the right order, but also that elements don't need to be focusable aren't. For extra polish, consider giving interactive elements hover states. And finally, see how your app works with a stylus. Input for all screens shows you how to implement all of these use cases and ensure your users get the best experience. Once these stocks have convinced you to start building for large screens, a great first step is using sliding pane layout to make better use of your screen real estate. And we've got just the workshop to show you how to do it. Check it out. To learn even more about large screens, go to developer.enter.com slash large screens, where you can read about topics like navigation, multi-window support, and migrating your app to adaptive UI. Next up, Android 13. Android 13 Beta 2 is now available, evolving the platform to make it even more powerful, safe, and secure. We have deep dives into many Android 13 features to help you understand the latest and greatest additions to the platform. In developing privacy user-centric apps, we'll show how Android increasingly surfaces how apps are accessing sensitive information and show how you can minimize data access or permissions. Android 13 introduces a new permission for posting notifications and deprecates read external storage in favor of new, finer grain permissions. Better yet, it brings a brand new photo picker, which lets users select media files without needing to grant your app access to their entire media library. No permissions needed at all. It also introduces new APIs to revoke permissions if you no longer need them, such as after removing a feature or a one-time access. Learn all about these changes and how apps not yet targeting API 33 behave on an Android 13 device. We recently announced the Privacy Sandbox on Android, an initiative to introduce new, more private advertising solutions. We've proposed a number of APIs to improve users' privacy while still enabling advertising business models. For example, Android has always sandbox apps within separate processes, but all code in your app runs in the same sandbox with the same access to data or permissions, including any third-party SDKs. What's more, you are responsible for any data collected by your app. In Android 13, we plan to introduce the SDK runtime to distribute, install, and run ad-related SDKs independently from apps to limit the data they can access. 
We also plan to introduce new privacy-preserving APIs for targeting user interests, managing custom-defined audiences, and for attribution reporting. Check out Overview of the Privacy Sandbox on Android for all the details. The iconic Android back action has evolved from a physical button to a software affordance to an ergonomic gesture. But it can sometimes be unpredictable where pressing back will take you. We want to make this more predictable and fluid for both you and your users. Android 13 introduces the evolution of back with a brand new opt-in API, letting you tell the system ahead of time whether you're handling back or not. This enables us to better communicate to users what back will do, for example, previewing that back will exit the app and return you to the home screen. Check out Back to the Basics of System Back for all the details of implementing this with the Jetpack Activity Library and a peek at how we plan to extend this even further to make all back navigation smooth and predictable. We continue to balance providing powerful APIs for background work with preserving device battery life. In particular, we've standardized background app restrictions, improving consistency across devices in the ecosystem. Android 13 introduces new automatic and user-selected app restriction levels, affecting how much background work they can perform. Android 13 also brings new background and alert battery thresholds, potentially notifying users if apps are consuming too much battery when running in the background. To help perform background work efficiently, we continue to improve job scheduler, making prefetch jobs run closer to the next estimated app launch, and introducing the ability to supply a job priority used to kill lower priority jobs when a device is in a critical state, such as overheating or having poor network connectivity. Watch Managing Background Work on Android for more details and tips for writing efficient apps using Work Manager, FCM, Bluetooth scanning, reacting to device throttling, using camera X, or handling displays with high refresh rates. Machine learning continues to progress and enable new user experiences in your apps. Check out what's new in Android machine learning to hear the latest developments in on-device ML. We'll cover the two main ways of using ML in your apps. Using MLKit, our ready-to-use mobile ML SDK, or going custom with the help of Android's custom ML stack. MLKit updates many of its APIs, such as real-time pose detection, face detection, and digital ink handwriting recognition, improving accuracy, latency, and reducing SDK size. Its text recognition API can now support 37 languages, representing 4.9 billion people worldwide. We're also launching a brand new Google Code Scanner feature in Google Play Services, making it easy to scan barcodes, QR codes, and other codes with no need for the camera permission. If your use case isn't covered by MLKit or you need more control, we've got you covered with improvements to our custom ML stack. We're introducing new APIs for hardware acceleration and updatable drivers. And the big news is that TensorFlow Lite runtime is now available via Google Play services. Rather than embedding TensorFlow Lite, you can switch over to this new public beta API to reduce your APK size and get easier access to regular updates such as performance improvements. Check out the session for more details and to learn what the machines have learned. Next up, here's a snapshot of what's going on in Camera. We continue to invest in the CameraX library as the way to work with cameras. We're working with OEMs, providing a test suite to ensure consistent support, and operating our own test lab, verifying behavior, and adding compatibility fixes. CameraX version 1.1 is now RC, adding video capture with drop-in WYSIWYG camera controls. Video capture supports camera selection, optional audio, and resolutions from SD to 4K, depending on the device. We continue to add camera capabilities both to the platform and through Camera X. For example, Android 13 introduces HDR video capture. Camera X backsports this, as well as new preview stabilization and jitter reduction. Camera X provides an extension API to access special effects that manufacturers implement. What about devices that don't support extensions? We're exploring adding our own software implementation of extensions as a fallback. We're starting by adding a bokeh extension fallback coming later this year. Check out the What's New in Android Camera session to learn more in full resolution. In this session, binge watch the latest developments in media. With more devices supporting HDR video, it's important to include HDR capture or import in your apps, or properly transcode to SDR. Android 13 standardizes the required HDR formats for capture and playback with updates to Jetpack Media to help with HDR playback, editing, and transcoding coming soon. 
Android 13 adds spatial audio support, and ExoPlayer 2.17 configures the device for spatial audio by default. Just include multi-channel audio tracks in your content. Speaking of ExoPlayer, it has also added DRM key prefetching, better Android 12 compatibility for background downloads, and server-side add insertion. We continue the process of migrating from ExoPlayer to Jetpack Media Free. Jetpack Media Free goes beyond playback use cases, for example, providing support for editing and transcoding media. Stay tuned for its first stable release and guidance on migrating from previous media APIs later this year. Android 12 introduced Performance Class, enabling you to query a device's capabilities to tailor media features accordingly. Android 13 adds Performance Class 13, reflecting new memory, media, and camera capabilities. We've recently released a new Jetpack Core Performance Library to extend Performance Class support back to Android 11 based on device certification test results or additional manual testing done by Google. Check out what's new in Android Media for more. Speaking of media, go hands-on in this workshop to learn how to add media streaming to your app using the media-free ExoPlayer library. We'll walk you through setting up playback, supporting adaptive streaming, and responding to playback events. Go stream the streaming workshop. Accessibility is an important part of any app. And by integrating accessibility features and services, you can improve your app's usability for everyone. In this talk, we show how Android Studio can detect and offer fixes for common accessibility issues, such as insufficient touch targets or missing content descriptions. We then examine Jetpack Compose's accessibility features, such as automatic touch target sizing in material components or required content descriptions on icons and images. Next, we take a deep dive into Compose's semantic system, understanding how it models your UI, what information you can provide, and how semantic nodes can be merged into meaningful units. Finally, we show how to use the Layout Inspector to inspect and verify the semantics tree. Check out the session for more. The new Google Wallet gives you fast, secure access to your everyday essentials. From event tickets, boarding passes, to vaccine cards, you can now store anything in Google Wallet. We're evolving the previous Google Pay Passes API, now called Google Wallet API, to make it easier to save items to Google Wallet. We're launching a new Android SDK, which allows you to save passes directly from your app without a backend integration. We continue to support all the existing pass types, but are adding a new generic card, allowing you to save anything not covered by the existing pass types, such as membership cards, reservations, or vouchers. We're also adding the ability to group multiple passes together, for example, grouping an event ticket with a voucher. Existing Pay Passes API integrations will continue to work, but please update to the new Wallet button once the Google Wallet app is launched. For full information on integrating with Google Wallet, watch the session, read the docs at developers.google.com slash wallet, or take the new code labs. But there's even more in Android 13 that we can cover in this year's talks. Be sure to check out developer.android.com slash 13 to learn more about new features and behavior changes, such as themed app icons, per app language settings, MIDI 2.0, programmable shaders, new runtime permissions for nearby Wi-Fi devices, and more. Download the Android 13 beta, test your apps, and check out the new features. Increasingly, users have more smart devices in their lives, and they expect app experiences to work seamlessly across them. Android lets you build for all these devices, from TVs to watches to smart speakers, with the phone at the center of your connected world, creating an experience that works better together. We're building a software stack to enable multi-device experiences, leveraging ultra-wideband, BLE, and Wi-Fi. Our cross-device APIs will abstract away the underlying connectivity technologies so that you don't have to worry about what capabilities the user's device has. We're working on a new library offering device discovery and wake-up, secure communications, and multi-device transfer to build seamless handoff experiences. Learn more about these capabilities in the multi-device development session. One of the first use cases to consider when thinking about cross-device communication is authentication. And we have three APIs to help you with just that. First, Blockstore, a secure and simple API that allows apps to store and transfer tokens across devices, enabling a zero-touch setup without a sign-in flow on new devices if users have previously signed in to your app. If your users don't have an account yet, then the OneTap API makes it easier to create an account and sign in. OneTap provides a cohesive cross-platform experience supporting several types of credentials, 
and is also available on the web, so users can seamlessly authenticate anywhere. Finally, passkeys, which can replace passwords and aren't easily leaked as they're cryptographically secure. Passkeys are backed up and synced to a Google account in the same way as passwords are backed up to the password manager. That means your users' passkeys go with them when they replace their devices. To sign in to apps on a new phone, all users need to do is unlock their phones. To hear more about Blockstore, OneTap, and passkeys, and learn how to implement the APIs, check out the talk. Next up, there are a number of updates to how Google Play helps you to bring your app to market and build a successful business. The Play console helps you to monitor and prioritize app quality issues and then act to fix them. In this talk, learn about the latest additions to the console. To monitor your app, use Android Vitals. It shows issues with the same quality data that the Play Store uses. Vitals now offers a reporting API, enabling you to extract data to build your own dashboards and workflows. Vitals has also added the ability to explore or filter issues by country, and we now show if issues happened in the foreground or background. We've improved integration with Crashlytics. You can now link your app with Crashlytics to see play track information and soon Vitals data directly in Crashlytics. We've also aligned issue labels with Crashlytics to make it easier to work across both products. We're also introducing new tools to help you to prioritize which issues to address. In addition to the bad behavior thresholds and peer sets that help you to compare issue rates to other apps, we're adding a new reach and devices tool to slice and dice by device specs, country, vital statistics, and revenue to find out where to focus your efforts. We're also revamping the device catalog, showing more details of device models and specs, and offering new dynamic filters. Go watch the talk to learn more. Google Play helps you grow your business across three aspects acquisition, engagement, and monetization. Custom store listing allows you to increase customization, flexibility, and experimentation to drive acquisitions. You can use custom store listing with tip links, have up to 50 listings, have finer control over A-B tests, have forecast time to complete experiments, and faster results and continuous monitoring. Next, engagement. LiveOps in beta enables you to show in-app content across the Play Store to drive user engagement. And this year, we launched a new LiveOps type called Offers and reporting for LiveOps within the Play Console. Finally, monetization. We expanded our payment methods and regional partners and improved buyer reach by lowering the minimum prices you can set in any market. Subscriptions have been reimagined, bringing you more options around offers eligibility and pricing, and less complexity, without the need of adding more SKUs for each new offer in your subscription. To optimize your performance, we launched strategic guidance for monetization and in-app messaging to recover and boost your revenue potential. Check out the talk for all the details on these new tools. Next, we go beyond phones and look at how Android lets you build for many form factors, from watches to TVs to cars. Where should we start? With Wear. In Create Beautiful, Power Efficient Apps for Wear OS, learn how Compose support has now reached beta, making it fast and easy to build beautiful material design apps. The talk will then take you through how the Health Services APIs help you to build power efficient health and fitness apps across different underlying hardware, allowing you to focus on building your app. They provide APIs for common tasks like workout tracking, collecting all-day health metrics, and high-fidelity instantaneous measurements of metrics like heart rate. Once you've collected data, the next step is storing and sharing it. And we have just the talk for you. Many different apps on different devices record health-related data, but the data is trapped within each individual app or service. We've heard that users want to see all of their data in one place and gain actual insights from the full picture. Health Connect will bring together Google Fit, Fitbit, and Samsung Health into one consolidated Android API to read and write to an on-device data store with the user's consent. Health Connect is now in alpha through the Jetpack Health API and launches for users this fall. Check out the talk for all the details. Now, think big, really big, TV. In what's new in Android TV and Google TV, we recap the improvements in Android 12 such as 4K UI support or curating content for a dedicated watch next space for kids profiles. We then take you through the new features in Android 13 that improve performance and quality. 
For example, Audio Manager has the ability to anticipate audio route changes or reacting to HDMI state changes to save power and post content when needed. We've also added new picture-in-picture -picture support, offering an expanded format, which defaults to docking the picture-in-picture -picture instead of floating. We've also added new APIs to allow for opting out of this dock mode, as well as the ability to mark areas that shouldn't be covered by a floating window. Go watch the talk for more details. Both Android Auto and Android Automotive OS are driving millions of users to your apps. We continue to update our car app library, which makes it easy to build and publish for both platforms using simple templates with expanded categories of supported apps. The 1.3 release of car app library later this month adds map interactivity in all map templates, support for dynamically updating point of interest list destinations, navigating to multiple destinations, and alerters to notify users of things like traffic camera ahead or new rider requests for driver apps. Check out what's new with Android for Cars for all the details. Next up, it's time to talk tools. What is new in Android development tools? Well, turns out, quite a lot. This session recaps the major features in the recent Android Studio stable releases, Bumblebee and Chipmunk, and then turns its attention to Dolphin, which is now in beta, and Electric Hill, which is in Canary. I know, a demo is worth a thousand words, so we'll walk you through Play SDK Lincheck, Gradle Manage Virtual Devices and Automated Test Devices, the all-new Lockout, Live Streaming Local Devices, Compose Preview Enhancements, Live Edit, and multi preview, layout inspector recomposition counts, and more. But it's not just features we've been working on. We'll also highlight the team's efforts to increase the quality and stability of Android Studio. To investigate and solve performance issues in your app, we've got several tools and libraries to help. This talk starts by recapping the key tools Perfetto, Android Vitals in the Play Console, and Android Studio Profilers, including the new Jank Detection track in the CPU profiler added in Android Studio Dolphin. We then show how to use the Macro Benchmarking Library to instrument key flows such as App Startup and the Jank Stats Library to identify, attribute, and report janky frames as they happen in the field. Next, we cover what baseline profiles are and how adding them can offer impressive performance improvements to App Startup and key flows. You really have to check this out. Finally, we cover updates to the Android framework to keep your app performing at its best. In Android 12, Art also became a mainline module. This means that any device running Android 12 and above will get Art updates outside the Android release cycle, and runtime improvements will be, mostly, backwards compatible. This enables us to make OpenJDK API updates, performance updates, and deliver bug fixes. Check out what's new in Android performance for more details. And finally, check out the what's new in Android talk, which covers Recursion. So we're done. Well, we covered the latest on Jetpack and Compose, large screens, Android 13, building multi-device experiences that are better together, Google Play, Wear, Auto, TV, and last but by no means least, developer tools. But for even more, be sure to check out developer.android.com for documentation, samples, and collabs. Hopefully, we've helped get you up to speed on what is new in Android and where you can go to find out more. Thanks for watching. Are you still here? Why are you still here? Go watch the talks.